Mile Pond for his fishing historic places here. Three Mile Pond, Sheffield, Massachusetts. It's a, uh, it's a reservoir, really. For many years, it was private. The state bought it. This is one of the better bass lakes in western Massachusetts. And being as it's in Sheffield, it's got some history. You understand that it was here in Sheffield that the last battle of Shays' Rebellion was fought. And literally, those Shazites had camped out in this little river valley prior to their discovery by the forces of the state of Massachusetts. Shays' Rebellion being a, a, a very uh, big moment in Massachusetts, really, and for our nation, something that doesn't really get celebrated much as it should. I mean, it led to the Constitution. But as you can see, we've just run up on a stump. Don't even bother, Steve. I'm with my brother. Just let it sit here and throw some casts. This lake's probably maximum depth is 16 feet, but most of the lake is much shallower. We're going to be running spinner baits here. And, uh, and Steve's got a surface plug on. He's got a one of those whopper ploppers. He had some success with it last week. And I'm throwing a spinner bait. We're going to see if we can uh, make anything happen here at Three Mile Pond. And the thing I like about a spinner bait at this time of the year is that you burn it. You, you know, you want to want to bring the thing in right under the water, make the lure bulge, make it bulge. You can see what I'm doing. It's my technique. Steve is working his whopper plopper like a buzzer. Spinner baits are real hard to get stuck too. So what I do is I bring it in right under the water, get it up to the top. And there it is. Even if it comes out like that once in a while, that's okay. It just causes a commotion. We have a friend, uh, Bruce Myers, Steve. Remember, he used to say, bass are like caveman fish. They don't care. You throw a bicycle on the end of your line, and they will hit it. And that's what these spinnerbaits are like. It's like a bicycle. If you think about throwing little tiny nymphs and flies when you're fly fishing, this is really about as different as you can get. And the spinnerbait is a bait that you're, you're, you're basically running on uh, tight line all the time. I guess like Euro nymphing, but in the case of the spinnerbait, you want to keep that bait moving. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can fish them. I, I, uh, probably my favorite all-around bait for bass is the spinnerbait. Because we got an overcast sky and a tropical system coming up from the south, Steve has decided to go with surface plugs right away. It's about 5.30 maybe, quarter of six at night here in June and uh, we've got a perfect night to catch some bass. Let's... I personally don't mind taking pickerel off the hook. A lot of people get really freaked out. I'm going to touch Now to hear this flutey call, it's spin spiraling downwards. Yeah. That's that's a territorial call of a veer. We were hearing the veer call and now we're hearing the spiral downward of it. So. So what was it doing first? It was going it was beer. 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 Now it's now it's doing its So now it's being a jerk. It's this is really, to, this is a kind of thrush. It's related to our It's robin. telling us to get out of here. It's a no. No, no. It's related to our robin. It doesn't care about us at all. How do you know it doesn't care about us? I don't think that bird wants us around. get the horizon stable here. We are in fact in a canoe, a sports pal canoe. We got a little bass leak going on today. We got several canoes and kayaks out here on the lake. And we are hung up. Steve, uh, you might want to I got it, brother. Push us off here and I can get the motor going. Motor and Oh, there we go. Stan man, on! Right over there. It came right up. Don't worry about reeling it. You got a little large mouth here. Nothing big. I got my drag set. Awful light. And he's in the... <laughs> he's not that small, but he's certainly nothing to brag about. And uh, he hit the spinner bait. You can see our little large mouth here. Uh, I'm getting his... I'm getting him off. He's got a mouthful of weeds. Spinnerbait right in the side of the mouth pops right out. 
We're gonna throw this guy right back where he belongs into the depths of the Muganji, as my Uncle Tom likes to say. <laughs> we're gonna go out here and we're gonna see if we can pull some more in. Yeah, Shays Rebellion was a huge moment in the history of Massachusetts. The Shaysites, or as they called themselves, the Regulators, were very upset. Many of them were Revolutionary War veterans. You can stop rowing. Let me try to sneak us through. Oh, darn it. We're in some shallow water here. Let's see if we hit five more. Yeah. So these Shazites were upset. Many of them, as I said, Revolutionary War veterans, were upset with the direction the state of Massachusetts was taking. Sam Adams, the rabble rouser, the leader of the Sons of Liberty, had become governor. And he was tied to the eastern banking interests in the state of Massachusetts, which was at that time an independent country. And these banking interests were foreclosing on Massachusetts farmers who couldn't afford to pay back the loans that they had taken often during the heart of the revolution as they had gone away to fight in the war, leaving their wives and children behind to work on the farms. And as a result, probate courts began confiscating farmers' properties, leading the regulators to form up in 1785, led by several different individuals, Parsons, a Chicopee, Shays of uh, out, out east, I can't even remember what town he was from, Menden maybe, and then Luke Day of West Springfield, Mass. And these guys basically mobbed the probate courts. Judges would show up to foreclose on properties and they would be met by mobs of Shazites who would say, uh, Judge, the, uh, the court is closed today. Um, if you know what we're saying, it might be safe uh, for you if you just go on home and, uh, and uh, we'll do the same. And that's kind of how things were going for quite some time until Governor Bowden, friend of Sam Adams, took over after Sam left. Governor Bowden decided it was time <laughs> to intervene with state power. He couldn't let the rabble in Massachusetts' western co uh, counties even though they were <clears throat> veterans of the revolution, like Luke Day, fought in the war for seven years in every major battle in the northern campaign. No, we can't just let these guys go. We can't forgive their loans. We can't. No. In fact, we aren't even going to make good on their continental IOUs. They had been paid by the Continental Congress in continental dollars and chits and the banks wouldn't accept them and the state wouldn't back them. Now of course all the other states did. Connecticut did, Virginia did, Pennsylvania did, but good old Massachusetts, the home of the revolution said, nah, you can collect from the Continental Congress, which means that all the other states would have to support them. <laughs> In addition to Massachusetts. It was Massachusetts getting out on the cheap. How things change how they stay the same. Let's float across right here, Steve. We got some good, uh, good submerged wood out there. Steve fires in. Now we're looking at an area where we've got probably uh, five, six feet of water over weeds. Now this is a very scenic lake. We got some thunderstorms moving in from the west, tropical system as I was saying, but they're a few hours away. We should be dry. They shouldn't hit until we're on our way home. But this lake is, uh... Oh, the Stevester, the Peeper Ramut. Oh, and he's got himself a bass on the, uh... Oh, he loses at the boat. Long line release, they call that. He's using the wire. He dropped it back in the water and another bass hit it. I think it was the same one. It couldn't have been the same one. You had the thing on the end of your line. There's no way it was the same one. That isn't going to happen. Nobody would believe that if that wasn't on film. The fish gets off. He sets the lure down in the water and another fish hits it immediately. And I just missed one. What do we got? A regular... We got a regular, like, school of them here or something. This is kind of crazy. There's like a pile of bass here that are, uh... 
Tom Price is an officer of the law. Tom Price would have to make a tough decision if we had another Shays Rebellion. I personally, I don't know. You know, what would I do? Would I be a Shays? I think I probably would be a Shays. Just because, you know, the big banks in Boston and all that stuff. Come on. So, um, they didn't have stimulus packages. So, um, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't mind bankers, and I think you need banks, and banks are great, but I also think that you have to support your military personnel. You know, you you're, you got people that are away at war for how many years in the revolution? You know, of course, Sam Adams, the governor of the state of Massachusetts, right, was the guy that got that war going, and then he he's, uh, he's, <laughs> he's basically not paying the war debt of the state of Massachusetts. He's not paying off his... Massachusetts boys who went. He's got a little line problem. Up there. You put more line on your the pole. No, I'll throw it in there again. Should be all new line. This is it's just a, it's just peeling off. All new line. Oh, oh, sitting there, just sitting there, and one wheeled it. Of course, hang on. Hey, you can reel. I can't. I missed one. Pull it in. I can't reel. What, what's the matter? It just peels off. The, like, I think your lure just got hit as it was sitting in the I got one. You got a fish. <laughs> <laughs> he was working on his line, and now he's got a fish on. He's going to have to bring it in hand over hand. This is pretty funny. This is the kind of thing I get when I bring my naturalist brother fishing. He's, he's literally hand over handing. This is insane. What kind of fish is this? This is not a small fish. It just came up and now he's going to hand over hand. He's literally hand over handing this fish. Whatever kind. Be careful now. If he runs, let him take the line. I don't have. I can't. Oh, look at this bass the guy got. Now, when you pull it out of the water, show the camera, please. Take it. Pick it up. Hold on. Take it. Uh, Hold on, uh, just stick your thumb in there. The worst thing that can happen is you get hooked. I'm Stop being a nitwit. <laughs> Tom is joined in Rapala sitting Beautiful there. He's got sun. fishing line all over, over the Over the western mountains. You can see with a northwest wall protecting this valley why the Shazites would have used this as a refuge. This town of Sheffield's on the other side, about in the direction of the sun right now. The Great Barrington's off to the north. So it's, it's got a lot of side of that hill there was a battle it wasn't really much of a battle I think two died and the rest turned and ran and they basically went to New York get out of Dodge <laughs> get out of Dodge get while the getting is good right most of them got pardoned and got a piece of fish on here looking at the setting sun I can feel this fish he's in something over there There's so much milfoil in here. I can feel this fish like literally coming in. Like I'm gonna back down on it. I thought he was a big fish. He's not a small fish, but he's not a big fish. He's just in this this filthy milfoil. Oh. He's just uh, he's in the salad. He's not a small fish, as you <laughs> can see. He's uh, he's in the salad bowl here. And he hit the spinner bait. As he should have been doing earlier, but nothing, nothing huge, but not, not a bad fish, right? That's a respectable bass. 
hanging out where the Shazites <laughs> hung out back in 1787. Here he is today. I mean, we're surrounded by this just gorgeous wilderness with historical memory. You know, there's cellar holes. There's all kinds of great stuff to be seen here in Sheffield, Massachusetts. Old cemeteries out in the middle of the woods and all that. And there's hogs. There's bass. And as my brother's showing you, there's a lot of panfish. So get out and fish your local historic place. Um.